Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Welcome to lecture number 12 of Advanced Computer Architecture. Today's topic is replacement algorithm in caches. Uh, this is the discussion agenda. We will discuss uh, different replacement algorithm like least uh, frequently used or least recently used or um, there is another algorithm probably this name is not correct it's FIFO it should not be NMU it's by mistake uh, so we will discuss FIFO uh, write policy so we will discuss uh, uh, the technique then when we write data from cache to RAM so different techniques are used one is write through and write back there is another technique that is right around. Uh, we have line caches. Uh, this is what the line sizes we will discuss. We will discuss multi-level caches. And we will discuss two types of caches, that is unified and uh, split. So this slide explains why do we need a replacement algorithm. Because when the cache is filled, so we need a new block into the cache. And when we bring new block, so the existing block in the cache must be replaced and it must be stored in the RAM. For direct mapping, there is only one possible line for any particular block and no choice is possible. But for associato and set associato techniques, a replacement algorithm is needed. So direct mapping is very simple technique, but associato and set associato techniques, they are more complicated. And recent architecture, they are using set associato technique. So that's why we need to understand replacement algorithm. And this algorithm must be implemented in hardware to achieve high speed because algorithm in software are slow and uh, algorithm in hardware are fast. So the most common replacement algorithms are least recently used. It's most effective and it replaces the block in the set that has been the indication longest with no reference to it. So this no reference is important. So the longer it is in the cache and with no reference, we will replace that. Because of its simplicity of implementation, LRU is the most popular replacement algorithm. Another algorithm is FIFO or sometimes it's known as FIFO which is actually first in first out so it replaces that block in the set that has been in the uh, cache longest and it is easily implemented as a round robin or circular buffer technique another technique is uh, LFU least frequently used it replaces that block in the set that has experienced fewest uh, references so it could be implemented by associating a counter with each line. So all these are different uh, replacement algorithm. LRU or MRU, least recently used or most recently used. This is explanation of LRU. So for example, if we have uh, a cache buffer, so the data here is least recently used and the data here is uh, most uh, recently used and we can replace um, least recently uh, page or uh, we can replace the most recently used page this is uh, LFU least frequently used technique so let's say we have data 0 to 1 for example this is 0 to 1 6 and we need data number 4 and 0 was the uh, least frequently used so we replace 0 with 4 then 0 come again and 2 was the least frequently used so then we replace zero, uh, 2 with 0 then 3 is coming 3 is uh, replacing number 6 because number uh, 1 is probably recently used yeah because number 1 is here so when number one is used and number three is coming so number one is used recently so um, that is not replaced but number six is replaced and then um, two is coming so we will replace number actually number four because number four was accessed here and then we replace four here 
so that's least frequently used there are some videos that you can watch to understand these techniques uh, this is uh, the technique when a block that is resident in the cache is to be replaced there uh, there are two cases to be considered uh, if the old block in the cache has not been change then it may be overwritten with a new block without first writing out the old block if at least one write operation has been performed on the word in that line of the cache then main memory must be updated by writing the line of cache out to the block of memory before bringing in the new block so there are two problems uh, more than one device may have access to main memory uh, because of this uh, parallelism and a more complex problem occur when multiple processors are attached to the same bus and each processor has its own local cache if a word is changed in one cache it could conceivably invalidate a word in that cache so these are the two techniques one is write through one is write back Write through means it's, it's a very simple technique and it means all write operations are made to main memory as well as to the cache. So the moment we write data to the cache, we also write to the uh, RAM. Uh, the main uh, advantage is uh, that it's simple. The disadvantage is that it generates substantial memory traffic and may create a bottleneck because every write operation to the cache is done to the RAM. And uh, write back, it minimizes memory writes. It updates uh, are made only in the cache. And when portion of uh, main memory are invalid and he is uh, accessed by IO module can be allowed only through the cache. So this way we update RAM only uh, after certain time or after we have uh, performed, like after we feel that this data need to be updated how do we feel that because when the uh, data is not referenced recently so in that case we know that this is no longer access and it must be stored in RAM but for the IO we do not allow IO to RAM we allow IO now to the cache so allowing IO to the cache requires complex circuitry and a potential bottle so write through and write back policy is explained so write through is in the middle for example processor 1 it update address x1 and in the cache and address x1 is updated in the RAM. write back so address x1 is updated it's on the right figure but x1 is not immediately written to the RAM and then there is uh, yeah the before update is shown on the left side all right so this is right through and right back for the multi-core and many core systems we we need a simple technique of uh, uh, right through and right back does not work so we need more complicated uh, solution one simple solution is um, invalidate protocol like the moment a processor update a location X it invalidates that location for uh, other processor but again with the multi-core and many core system uh, simple invalidate protocol does not work and we need more uh, advanced protocol so this is uh, a snoopy cache coherency uh, protocol is uh, another uh, advanced protocol and uh, you can study about that this diagram is showing only the uh, invalidate protocol you can watch more about this uh, snoopy protocol uh, in this video so when the block of the data is retrieved and placed in the cache not only the desired word but also some number of adjacent words are retrieved so as the block size increases the hit ratio will at first increase because of the principle of locality and as the block size increases more useful data are brought into the cache the hit ratio will begin to decrease as the block become bigger 
and the probability of using the newly fetched information becomes less than the probability of reusing the information that has to be replaced. So two specific effects come into play. Larger blocks reduce the number of blocks that fit into a cache. As a block becomes larger, each additional word is fur further uh, from the requested word. So that's why we need uh, multiple level of cache. So as logic density increases, um, there are possible that we have a cache on the same chip as the processor. The on-chip cache reduces the processor external bus activity and speeds up execution time and increases overall system performance. When the requested instruction or data is found the on-chip cache, the bus uh, access is eliminated. Uh, in some processor, we are using two level of cache. So internal cache designated as level one, L1 cache, and external cache external to the processor. Uh, external to the processor, I mean still it is on the chip, but uh, it's external to the control unit. And that is L2, and in some cases we have L3. So potential saving due to the use of an L2 cache depends on the hit ratio in both the L1 and L2 caches. The use of multi-level caches complicates all of the design issues related to caches, including size, replacement algorithm, and uh, write policy. Uh, this is an example of L2 cache. So if we have smaller L2 cache, the hit ratio is small. But as we increase, uh, this line shows for L1 and uh, this green line shows for uh, L1. Yes, so L1 size compared to L2 cache size. So L1 is 16K but as we increase the l2 cache so after it reaches equal to l1 cache we see performance improvement and in case of 8k so it means that l2 cache size must be uh, bigger than l1 cache to, uh, so that uh, after that only after that you will be able to see uh, performance improvement uh, this is the organization so inside the CPU we have register file and then we have L1 cache and then L1 has L2 cache L2 is normally shared with multiple CPUs then we have L3 cache and a group of CPUs uh, some some groups of CPUs depend on the ar architecture of the processor but normally group of processors they are using uh, different L3 caches they are sharing L3 caches and then there is main memory and then there is secondary memory so unified versus uh, split caches uh, it's common that we split uh, the caches like one cache is dedicated for instruction one cache is dedicated to data uh, and uh, both uh, exist at the same level uh, typically as two L1 cache. So we have one L1 cache as data and uh, one L1 cache as uh, instruction. Advantage uh, of uh, uh, unified cache is high hit ratio but uh, the trend is towards that we have uh, L1 split cache. So L1 is normally we have separate instruction cache and data cache but uh, uh, L2 cache is more unified, uh, L3 cache uh, is uh, unified. So these are uh, advantages of unified cache. It has a higher hit rate and advantage of the split cache uh, is the cache contention between instruction, fetch decode unit and execution unit. So this is an example. With the CPU we have L1 D cache, data cache and L1 instruction cache. For the data, we perform read and write operation. For the instruction, we have only the uh, read operation as the CPU is not writing any instruction. Similarly, for L2, it's uh, unified and main memory is unified. So this is uh, Pentium 4 cache organization. This is just a case uh, study where you see all these uh, replacement algorithm, the write back and write through policy, uh, split and unified caches, and different line sizes. So you can read uh, about this. This is uh, Pentium 4 architecture. 
we have L1 data cache here and L1 instruction cache and this is L2 cache it is uh, unified and then we have L3 cache it's 1 MB and uh, this is the uh, write invalidate uh, protocol uh, thank you very much